my question is, what should I do next? Should I, uh, should I just also do education? Should I go Bob, that's really class? your question. Can I challenge you guys on this webinar here? Can, can, is it okay if I challenge all of you since it's only four of you? Is it okay yeah. if I push all yeah, of your course. buttons? Can I do that? You got all yeah. these videos on value attainment that I answered this question and you asked me a question about what it is to whether I should go to college or not? No. Bob, right. I have a video called whether you should stay in school or drop out. Okay, I have a video yeah. called whether you should I stay in school. Okay then, so when you watch that video, what did you get from it that answered your question whether you should stay in school or drop out? Tell me. Look, um, when I watched that video, uh, the answer that I get is I should drop out. Then drop out. Uh, <laughs> it isn't that simple because the education. It is. It is that simple though. It is that simple though. You got so. So if you watch the video, and 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 you know you're a worker, okay, and you know you're a worker, and you know you're wired, and you know you're wired to be an entrepreneur. Uh, and you know you're not afraid of hard work, meaning you're not afraid of working day and night, and you love sales, you love selling, you have a product, you have a job, you have a way of making money, you catch yourself in class falling asleep, you're bored out of your mind, you can't even keep your mind together, the only subject that matters to you is a couple different subjects, and you don't understand why you have to take fine arts or physics or you know, biology, some of these things that you'll never use in your mind and your major is business, why would you go to school? Now on the other hand, if you're going to school because you want to be an engineer, it's probably a good idea to go to school. If you're going to school because you want to be a doctor, a dentist, a, uh, you want to go into politics one day and you would like to have a degree because you want to be a lawyer, you should go to school. But if it's business and you're wired to want to go into business, 80% of college students today should drop out, period. Now, here's the other part, Bob. You said how old, you're 18 or 19, how old are you? I'm 18. 18, okay, Bob. Can you go back to school at 22? Um, sure. Sure, I mean, sure, I mean, yeah. Can you go back to school at 32? I could, yeah. You could, so can you get married at 40? Um, it's a little bit late, but why not? <laughs> I promise you your sperm's gonna be working. My buddy is uh, my buddy is my buddy is 45 years old, 48 years old, and he had a kid. His daughter's five years old. He's right next door to us. So you just need to make sure you keep exercising, so your sperm is working even at that age. I mean, Donald Trump is 70 years old. He's got a 12-year-old son. That means his runners were working at 57 years old. But let me tell you where I'm going with this, with the with the point I'm making to you. There is this um, <clears throat> there is this concept of thinking so you know like, oh my gosh, you know I'm gonna go out there and I'm going to follow this system to the T and, and then it's going to work for me 100% of the time and I have to get married. Like I remember when growing up, my father was nearly four years older than my mom. I thought you had to marry somebody that was four, four, four years older than your mom because that's what was fed into my mind. The husband okay. should be four years older than, it's a bunch of bullshit, right? Yeah. You need to get married by latest, you know, I, I had a man that told me if you don't get married by age 28, you're a menace to society. I disagree with that. If you don't get married to a man, uh, to somebody at before 20, you're a menace to society. What if I get married earlier and then it doesn't work out and I get a divorce and I don't know how to be a father and I got two kids with a woman that's now got an ex-wife and that kid is going to grow up without a mom and daddy being together. And what if I did that mistake and I got married earlier? So people say, you got to go to school to get a degree. For what? Because that's what society wants you to do. Well, what if I go to school and I'm, you know, annoyed after four years of wasting time and I could have done something with business? That's a waste of my time. So I think, Bob, you have two choices. Um, one, if you don't know how to work hard, if you are not someone who is willing to work your tail off, stay in school. Stay in school. Okay. I promise you. If How, how many hours a week do you play video games, Bob? Uh, video games, I take Sunday off and I maybe play about um, four or five Zero, four, five hours, something like that. On Sundays, you play four to five hours of video games. Maybe if I if I have time, yes. Or I just go out to play basketball with my friends. That shit's got to be out the window. Just so you know, that's got to be out the window. You got to throw those video games out the window. Number two, do you smoke weed? Do you do you do you party way too much? Are you like hanging out with guys that are way too much into partying and they're distracted? No. Okay, I that's. Don't party. I don't. I don't smoke. Good. I, 
Good. So that the video game needs to be out. You need to get fully obsessed. How many books or content do you study on a weekly basis? How much are you immersing your mind into a subject? Uh, right now, it's kind of hard because I slowed down a little bit. Before, I was reading every every time, every one hour every day okay. before I go to bed. But um, right now, uh, something changes. Some in me, I think I got lazy in a way. I'm very honest, I got, I got lazy for some reason. Yeah, good. And uh, I stopped reading, but if I, I think if I have time, I should I should just use the time to read. So I, uh, I read now about four books, uh, something like that. All the books uh, you suggest, uh, you told me to read. Yeah. Uh, you said this in the top 10 thing, the e-myth, the lean startup, and other stuff. The, uh, it's through strategy of war I'm reading right now. Um, I'm halfway into it. And yeah. That's good. So let me say this to you, Bob. Let me say this to you. Um, it sounds like you need to stay in college. Okay? Okay. And let me tell you, you, you just answered it. When I asked you about hard work, you said, I'm being lazy right now. Let me tell you what I would do if I'm staying in college right now. One, take accounting classes. Take any class that's only around business. Okay? Okay. Don't, don't take any classes that are your, what do you call it, you know, that you're supposed to take to graduate selectives or what, electives, did it call, yeah. what do you call electives. it? Electives. Electives that you got to take. Don't, don't take any electives. Don't waste your time with any electives or any of that stuff. Take stuff that's going to help you with business. Um, okay. Accounting, take finance, take any business management cl courses. Find out who is the best teacher in the, in the university that ran a business before. Go in attend that person's class, don't go like, find out who the teachers are. I'm more interested in who the teacher is. So I would go and find out from the teacher and said, have you ever ran a business before? Yes. Was it successful? Yes. Did you sell it? Yes. I want to be in your class. Go in those people's classes. Don't go into people that just have theories and they're going to sit down and tell you about how capitalism sucks and rich people are greedy. Don't even waste your time being around people like that. But uh, take courses of people that ran a business before and then meanwhile, <laughs> Meanwhile, Bob, develop discipline because there's one thing I do know you have. Let me tell you what you do have. You're extremely entertaining. You are extremely entertaining. You are extreme. You got a big personality. You're a lot of fun. I can tell you're a lot of a. Uh, you got a sense of humor. You're charming. You got charm. You got charisma. I saw your video, while of I Tim, when you started with the whole way and you're doing the whole thing and 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 you got the whole magic, man. You got the magic with the personality. But sometimes guys with personalities like yours are extremely secretly lazy. Very, yeah. very lazy because their talent typically gets them to where they're currently at and your talent alone is not gonna get you to the next level. So stay in school still, uh, go take those basic courses that you're taking that have to do with business. Make sure the professors are people that ran a business before and only go to them for now. And then sometimes on a way to a dream, you get lost and find a bigger one, which means the next three, six, 12 months, kind of study yourself. See what behaviors are taking place. See what's inspiring you. See what's taking place with you. Instead of playing those video games, spend those four or five hours reading books. Drop okay. some stuff that are a waste of your time. Don't watch TV shows and cartoons that I do would, no service to you. I would definitely do that. I'm still in high school, but um, when I get to college, I will, uh, I will look to have great teachers. <laughs> and um, yeah, I talked to someone last week, which was also a millionaire, run an international um, business, and he told me to take detours. And take what course? Uh, detour. Take take what? Uh, detour, not to. Uh, not oh, a detour. To, uh, Got it. Detour. Yeah, because he said something that got me think a lot. Uh, he said, on the except. Uh, if you go to your goal straight in a straight line, you will miss all the things beside you. You know, you know what I mean. If you take details, maybe you can find the uh, things around you, and you can enjoy it that way. Maybe the maybe the way to goal is more important than actually get to the goal. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. Awesome. Okay. Well, Bob, let's go to the next question, guys. Hey, Pat, uh, Jason here. Can I go next? Absolutely, buddy. Take the lead. All right, first of all, you know, honored to be uh, selected for this. Really appreciate the, uh, the nomination. 
Um, just to start off, I only smoke weed and play video games on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can set that straight right now. Uh, now, um, I do have a couple questions for you, though, Pat. Um, first of all, what do you see value payment growing into? Uh, do you feel like you see more interactive uh, things like this with subscribers? Do you see it turning into a stronger brand, more uh, case studies? I love the case studies, by the way. That was a, I love those. Uh, where do you see it going? Like, I know we're going for the million subscribers, but what's, what's next? Listen, uh, that's a great question, and it's a fun question to answer because my, I, 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 I completely want to contribute towards revolutionizing the educational system. Um, we have a book that's coming out uh, that has to do with the whole dropout or stay in school. The book is going to be called Drop Out and Get Schooled, and it's extremely controversial, extremely controversial that will be coming out here soon. And uh, I have a feeling this thing's going to... Um, tick off a lot of people, which is good. It's, I'm looking forward to having this book start a um, new dialogue uh, amongst professors, academia, universities, teachers, parents, kids, everybody. I want everybody thinking about our current educational system that we have around the world. And then the other part is um, uh, the fact that, you know, I fully agree and believe that the world is a better place with more entrepreneurs. I fully believe that. I 100% believe the world is a better place if we have more entrepreneurs. And if we can figure out a way to create a community around the world, if we can figure out a way to create a community around the world that comes together and learns how to enhance their business to the next level and we can do it on a grander scale, I can only imagine what we can do to the world's unemployment rates that we have and what we can do to some of the people that are living in societies where their economical system is not necessarily a capitalistic system, maybe they're living in a socialistic or communistic system ran by a dictator that doesn't allow the individual to take their ideas that they have that we have been you know, holding on to. And I want, I want that guy to let loose. I want that guy to uh, spread his wings or her wings and fly away and show the world what inventions they're gonna bring that's gonna make this world a better place. I want that person to also have the ability to share their talents with the world. The other part is, I mean, I, I, I would love to see young cats like Bob Wu, who one day could be the next Jack Ma, and even, even, if a, even if a video like this or a channel like this inspires a Bob Wu to talk to a guy like me who typically doesn't talk to him like that, he typically doesn't have guys that push him around and, you know, and say, what the hell are you asking me a question for? I bet a lot of people don't talk to him like that, so he's gonna grow up thinking life is all, you know, uh, good and dandy until all of a sudden, wham, somebody hits him in the face and snap out of it. And uh, right, he right. becomes a man, he, he grows up a little bit. Or even a Shaheen Tete who's sitting there with his ideas of uh, virtual reality is questioning something that, what if we can make this thing better and experience virtual reality at the highest level with business? That's that part. And the other thing with value attainment is, um, you know, I grew up in a family where my mother's side, they were 100% communists and my father's side, they were all imperialist. And I was born in Iran. And I was born in a place where there was a lot of bombing. I remember getting bombed 167 times in a day. You better believe that created a lot of anxiety and fear in me as a kid. And I lived in Iran till 10 and then we escaped and we lived in Germany for a couple of years at a refugee camp. And then from there coming to America and going to school where school for me was miserable and I joined the army afterwards, and I just kind of said, well, you know, I'm not the smartest cat, I'm not the, you know, I'm not this, I'm not that, I'm just gonna go join the military and be in the military for a while. And then all of a sudden I get a hold of books, business books. And next thing you know, this guy that nobody would have bet on to become somebody in his life in high school, no one would have put money on PBD. These dif different events come together and inspire you know, me to make a decision that I could possibly go out and build a life that I dream about building, and then this happens. And there are millions of other Patricks or Jennifers or Marys or Bobs out there that are waiting for the similar type of an inspiration. So value team is eventually, because the more we're doing these types of things, the more we're getting demand for people to say, Pat, we want more one-on-one -on -one time. You know, the videos are great. We're getting a lot from the videos, but I want some one-on-one -on -one time. So we're most likely gonna eventually be doing three-day conferences for entrepreneurs to come from around the world where thousands of people will come and we'll cover everything from what it is to be a CEO, a test you gotta take to find out if you're a CEO or a CFO or a COO or a president or an investor 
or salesperson or biz dev person and who do you need to recruit and how do you need to recruit them? How do you raise money? And I'm going to bring investors there and private equity group guys there and, you know, introduce you to guys that have money and have them talk to you about how to raise capital and, you know, how to make your idea better. We're going to put conferences like that around the world. When we're going to do that, I don't know because I'm still running a full-time company that's growing aggressively fast. We had our biggest year we've ever had in the history of the company. And I do have three kids under the age of five, so and I'm doing value attainment, so uh, my, my time is pretty crazy right now. But that's probably where it's going to lead to next. Okay. Uh, that, that is a beautiful answer. I love that. Uh, I'm all about entrepreneurship, capitalism, and, uh, you know, that's why I'm so happy to come across your channel. There's not really a lot of support for groups out there that do that kind of thing. And then, you know, I went to college, you know, I went to, I went to Michigan State, and, uh, you know, I, I have a business degree, and they do teach you some things about entrepreneurship. They have entrepreneurship classes, but... They don't even they don't teach you the, the simple basics of you know incorporating a business. They won't they, they tell you the different ways to incorporate, like, you know, if you're gonna be a LLC, an S Corp, C Corp, that kind of thing. But as far as like going, you know, uh, to your state's website and figuring out if your name exists and, and all of that other kind of stuff, they don't they don't do that. And that's like basic building by stuff that I, I had to learn from my business. Uh, and you know, it, it it's it's crazy. Those things don't exist. So, I mean, um, I think what you're doing can help that cause a lot. And I also believe that entrepreneurs will help shape the world in the future or have helped shape the world thus far as well. Um, so I, I agree with you 100% on that. And I, I, I 100% support what you saying where it's headed. Um, yeah, I, I would tell you this. I, I, w I would tell you this as well, that eventually the goal is to start universities. There's going to be an entrepreneur university that'll be started that um, will completely revolutionize the way we educate and teach entrepreneurs around the world. Can you imagine you go on a website where you get to see who the instructor is before you take the class? For instance, you get to look at the profile and the instructor says, I have been a founder of a company before and I've sold it before for over $10 million. So you know that's the person that's teaching. Wouldn't you want to learn from that guy, right? Or you have an instructor that, you know, was a CEO of a company and helped the company go from $3 million of revenues to $100 million of revenues. You want to learn from that guy. Or an attorney who went through certain lawsuits and you can find out how this guy started a law firm that ended up being, you know, something significantly big. You want to study from that guy, but you can find out about their past on what they did. We, we would eventually start a university that's purely to give birth to the next level. Guys, I don't want to unveil everything that I'm working on. I'm going to have a book coming out here soon that's a fiction book. took me five years to write this fiction book. Once you guys read this fiction book, you're not going to, you're going to think I'm a bit crazy and I'm a bit off. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm kind of okay. delaying that part before you realize how crazy we are about our vision and what we want to do. And value attainment is going to become a very big movement around the world. So hang tight before you uh, hear about some of these things being unveiled. You, you're one of the first to know it because I haven't really talked about this publicly. But it's only five of us on this call. And this video may even end up being live. Who knows? But uh, the point being, there's some big things we're working on right now. So, uh, Jonathan, you got to drop the weed, though, man. I got to tell you, man, you got to drop the weed in the video games, man. Uh, if, if you're joking, if you're joking, great. Uh, but if you're not joking, here's the only reason I would say about weed. I, I think cigarettes are more dangerous than weed, quite frankly, because cigarette is, you know, man-made, and actually weed can be God-made because you're raising weed. So I think if any one of them needs to be legal, it's actually weed over uh, cigarettes. I think cigarettes needs to be illegal. I think weed needs to be legal, and I don't smoke either one of them. But for me... Uh, it's, it's also my opinion about alcohol. I used to drink a lot when I was in the army because I partied a lot and I was chasing skirts all the time. And anytime you drink three shots of tequila, you just have better pickup lines, if you know what I'm talking about. I don't know how it is that next thing you know, your pickup lines, <laughs> you, you have some smooth pickup lines that show up where you say, man, where did that, that line come out of? I should write it somewhere and use it again in the future. <laughs> But, uh, um, hey, but, but they said, man, no, that's, that's just, uh, no, I, I, I was just joking. About okay, that. man, I'm glad you're joking, man. That, the weed is going to slow you down, man. John, I'm telling you, weed slows you down. I just wanted to get your reaction on it. Well, you got a reaction. If that's what you were looking for, you got yourself a reaction, man.
<laughs> you got yourself a reaction. Man, just off of my business. And it'll be real quick. Tell me. Um, we have a few videos about the sales process. Yeah. Um, and you also have another one about compensating, like good, good salespeople. But what is your, your best technique that you use for recruiting good salespeople? Uh, what is the best technique to recruit great salespeople? Meaning, I'm already right. sitting in front of them, or how do I find great salespeople? Because it's di two different things. Um, yeah, a little bit of both. How do you okay. Do the, the first question: How do you do the, the actual yeah, the interview? Like, what what do you look for when you look for the salesperson? Well, let's first let's first talk about how how to, how to find great salespeople. So uh, it, it goes the same thing, man. How do you find really hot girls? Really hot girls typically have what type of uh, friends? Okay. What, Instagram. <laughs> oh, buddy, man, I'm starting to get an idea who you are, man. You, you got yourself a sense of humor here, but no, think about it. Think about it this way, though. Think about it this way. How do you really find hot girls? Hot girls typically have hot friends, right? I mean, when you go to, you know, when you go out and you would see the one girl who's very pretty, she would have four other friends that were also very pretty. For instance, you know, a... a high school quarterback who's the stud of high school doesn't hang out with 4.7 GPA kids, at least not all the time. He hangs out with the receiver, with the baseball player, et cetera, et cetera. So the same way that you have hot girls who have hot friends is the same way that great salespeople have great friends who are great in sales. So the moment I find someone who's great in sales, I ask them who else they know who's great in sales. I've always leveraged great salespeople to introduce me to other great salespeople. It's very similar to competitive people. Sometimes I'll take a competitive guy over somebody who's great in sales. So I'll look for people who have had backgrounds in sports. If a guy used to play sports before and he's an absolute beast of a competitor, let's just say this guy is so competitive that he just wants to crush everybody's number. He can't help himself. And you can see it in his eyes. His blood's boiling. He wants to compete. Give me that guy, I can teach that guy how to be great in sales over somebody who's got 20 years of sales experience. That's one. Now let's talk about the other part. Uh, how do you actually bring somebody in sales on board to want to work with you? One, you yourself got to have an example of success. So if you ain't making money, no one wants to work with somebody that doesn't have money. So if you're a five, you may recruit an eight, but you can only keep an eight for about a month because that eight is eventually going to realize you're a five and he leaves and goes, finds an eight and a half. Now, if you take your five and you raise it to a seven, you can probably recruit a six and a half, seven. But if you get a nine and a half or you get an eight and a half, that eight and a half, if you're not paying him well and he's not making a lot of money, he's going to go somewhere else, depending if you're a sales manager. It's different if you're the CEO and the founder of the company because... At that point, you can get a sales manager who's a nine and a half that's mentoring all these other guys and, and driving all these other guys. So it all depends on that part. Are you making money? Do you have success? Are you an incredible coach yourself that's very good at teaching other people about how sales works? The other part is when someone looks at you and you're sitting down talking to them, a great recruiter knows how to challenge the opposition's position. Let me say it one more time. A great recruiter knows how to challenge the opposition's position. What does this mean? Let's just say I'm sitting with Bobby, and I'm sitting here and I'm trying to recruit a guy named Bobby who does sales right now. Let's pick a place. He does sales for uh, jewelry, okay? He sells watches for Rolex, and he's one of the top guys at Rolex, and he, last year he made $83,000, hypothetically, hypothetically. And I'm sitting there and I'm doing insurance, I'm doing financial services, I'm doing real estate, I'm doing pharmaceutical sales, I'm doing gym sales, I don't know. Pick a product, what you're selling. And I sit down and I say, Bobby, um, how long do you see yourself doing this, uh, uh, what you're doing right now? Do you see yourself doing this in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years? Uh, I don't, but I like it right now. What do you like about it? I like the fact that I'm making very good money. I said, do you like the fact that you're making more money than your cousins and siblings? Or do you like the fact that you're just making you know, uh, some money to get a nice car and nice toy and nice watch to impress some people because, you know, there's a difference on who you're comparing yourself to. Are you making above quarter million? Are you making above half a million? Or are you just making more than your friends and relatives are? Then you notice body language and he gets a little uncomfortable and he says, okay, there, that stung a little bit, didn't it? Yes, it did. Okay. So are you happy or are you content? And they say, I'm happy. Oh, you're happy? Yes. Tell me why you think you're happy. And then this person's going to tell you, well, because I'm making money, I drive a nice car, I'm you know, doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing this. 
Then I say, okay, so you said you're happy, yes. So do you already have $300,000 in a bank? No. Do you already live in a nice house in a cul-de-sac? No. What's your favorite place to travel to? I'd love to go to Italy. Have you gone there lately? I have not. So are, do you want to go to Italy or do you just want to go to Vegas and take a picture in front of that Paris hotel and tell everybody you went to Paris, but it was really Vegas? What do you want to do? And then he'll say, no, I want to go to Italy. I said, so it sounds like you're more content, not necessarily happy. Bobby, if you want to be content, you don't need to work with me. If you want to be happy, I'm the guy to work with. What do you want to be? So it also comes across on how you recruit people to come on board and want to work with you. A great CEO, great founder, or great sales manager is a great recruiter and knows how to push the button that other people don't have the audacity to do. So I think I gave you plenty of answer for that one. You can do a lot with those things that I covered with you. Mario, it may not be a bad idea to actually do a video on this because we've never done a video on this before. We can, we can. Oh, great. Good answer. I appreciate that. Um, stay off the weed, man. I'm just telling you, man. Stay off the weed. <laughs> you're not going to see at one of these big events eventually. I'm going to see at one of our conferences, and you're going to come up and yeah. we're going to talk, and I'm going to tell you, dude, just stop smoking that stuff. I'm going to give you a hard time. I will not forget this day just so you know this, because <laughs> you pulled a prank on me. I'm going to double prank you one of these days. Okay. All right, man. Um, I think that's pretty much, I did, I did have one other thing. Let's um, do this. Hang tight for the question. I want to go to Jason, and then I'll come back to you to see if he got any questions. If he doesn't, then I'll come back to you. Um, hey, this is, this is Jason. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say Jonathan. Okay. Jonathan, you want me? I think... I think Jonathan's on a smoke break. <laughs> Jonathan, you, you sound like you're coughing, man. You, you know, it, 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 let us know if you want to join us here. Yo, Jonathan is muted for whatever reason. He's got the mic is muted. Let me see if I can unmute Jonathan. Unmute Jonathan. Jonathan, you're officially unmuted. Can you hear us? It says Jonathan is here, but we don't have him. Okay, since we don't have him, let's go back to the other questions. What has been your most successful method for prospecting clients? Like, I know, I know, what you, you know, you guys with the, uh, the insurances and everything like that. Um, what is what has been the best way that your salespeople have been out prospecting the client? Jason, what's your product? Uh, well, right now I have a uh, a business that's aimed towards teachers and parents. It's, it's pretty much a better way to buy school supplies. Okay, that's, that's one of the projects I'm working on right now. Uh, I can't really get too much into detail about how it works just because, uh, you know, we're going to hold, uh, can't do like a virtual, uh, not disclosure right now, but, uh. Oh, you haven't launched it yet. Is that what you're saying that you haven't launched it yet? Yeah, it has not, it, it started, but it's not, it's not officially launching until, uh, July 2017. So who is your customer? Tell me who's your customer. Well, my customer is going to be, uh, parents and teachers. Parents and teachers are your customer. Yes. Okay. So you're asking how to find more customers, right? Is what you're asking. Yes. Okay. Right. You, well, what does work for you? Yeah. So the 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 again, uh, Jason. It goes back to Jason. You the guy that did the video with your twin. It wasn't a twin, but you kind of made the two of you, and you yeah. had enjoy capitalism yeah. on. You know, we almost yeah. picked you to come here live. We almost picked you. Yeah. I, you, you. I hate to say, it, but you were like 11th spot. You were next to coming, uh, uh, joining oh. us here. I, I, I don't want to rub it in, but you were 11th spot, and and uh, first non qualifier was you. For what it's worth, man. But let me let me go back to the question you asked. Look, anything I do, anything I do, and anything I'm looking for, it doesn't matter what it is. Let's just say if I'm looking for a um, hypothetical, you know, this is a guy back in the days who used to bring players to Nike, Adidas, and Converse. Maybe you know this story, maybe you don't know this story. It's the Italian mafia guy that brought Michael Jordan to uh, uh, Nike. Uh, um, uh, I don't know if you know this story. Uh, um, um, so this guy, what he did for a living, he would go to high schools and he would look at top talent. He would go to high schools and he would look at top talent 
and he would pay them $300 for shoes and he would pay them $100 and he would get them sh you know, food and all this other stuff. So he won the loyalty of these 14 year old kids, 15 year old kids, I'll look up the name afterwards. He, 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 look up, he, he would get their loyalty and then they would stay with them from 14 till 18. And then at 18, he already had so much loyalty with them that all these recruiters from universities would go through him because he knew everybody. And eventually one day, this guy goes to Nike and he's sitting with the Nike people and he tells Nike, he says, look, Nike at that time in 1983, their philosophy was they were paying 10 players $50,000 a year endorsement contract. 10 players, 50K a year, that's socialistic philosophy. Just think about it. They were paying 10 guys 50K and this guy came and he says, look, stop doing this. He says, Converse has Magic Johnson, Bird, and everybody else. At that time, Converse was the shoe for basketball players. He says, we got to pay half a million dollars to one guy. His name is Michael Jordan. He says, but this guy's going to make you a lot of money. And Nike almost didn't do it, but they finally said yes. They paid a half a million dollars to Mike. And there's never been an endorsement contract bigger than that at, that at that time. And then Mike becomes Air Jordan. And then Mike now dates his shoes. I don't know what the number is, 22 billion. I don't know. It's a massive number that I read the other day that it's big. Yeah. Now, now what, what's this got to do with the question you ask? It's very simple. If I'm a recruiter for college or MBA, guess who I want to know? I want to know that Italian mafia guy because he knows all the talent, okay? Right. If I want to know, if I want to date a girl and have her be my uh, girlfriend and I really like this girl, she's like the, she's the girl that you want to have as a girlfriend, girlfriend, I want to make sure everybody around her knows and likes me, everybody. Her mom, her dad, her best friend, her teacher, her softball coach, her personal trainer, if she's got a pastor, her pastor, it doesn't matter. I want everybody that's around her to like me. Because if they like me, guess what they're gonna tell her? Hey, you should think about that guy, Patrick. He's a good guy. You should, you should think about this guy. Pat, watch, Bob, Bob, Wood, Bob Q right now, Bob Wood is taking notes right now, 18 year old kid in high school. He's trying to land that girl, Michelle, who's a cheerleader in his school. <laughs> And you know he's fantasizing about her. Bob, turn off the porn right now, man. Stay focused on this video that we're having. Um, so, so, so this is the question, man. J uh, Jason, wherever teachers and parents are, you need to be. Wherever. If teachers and parents have a PTA uh, meeting, you have to be there. Uh, if there's a, a soccer practice, you got to be there. If there's soccer leagues, you got to be a part of it. If there is anything and everything that has to do with parents and teachers being there, you need to be there. So take out a sheet of paper and make a list of all these guys where they're going to be and make sure you're at every single one of them. Make sure they all know who you are. Make sure they all know your product. Then after that, here's the next part. Here's the next part. You're kind of hogging this webinar, which is okay. Um, here's the next part. Here's the next part. Let me tell you what the next part is. The next part is, if you can land the most influential person as a customer, you have them all. If yeah. you can land the most influential person out of the soccer moms or whatever to become a customer of yours, you have them all. That's really the game plan. If you do I, that, I you're getting all of them. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think uh, it's such a niche market, the uh, you know, parents and teachers, it's, it's real direct. Uh, so I think uh, I think that would actually be a really good uh, good technique to use. So thank you for that. You got it, buddy. You got it. Do we have Jonathan Grant on now? Got got you, got you. Uh, can you hear me now? I can, man. I can. Oh, okay, good, good. I, I got a, um, a quick question. I, I kind of wanted to jump in a long time ago, but um, man, I uh, I have a foreclosure business. I maintain foreclosed houses for uh, banks and management companies that. Um, I've been doing it about four years, man, and, and uh, I'm one of those guys, man. I kind of been winging, winging it, you know, and, and uh, I built it up, man. We we do a, probably about three hundred thousand dollars a year uh, with with this business. And the thing is, uh, my my big mistake is I uh, stay small, too small, and um, and now you know I'm I'm actually uh, I've joined PHP. And I'm wanting to um, transition, you know, into into that more. And I kind of have so much going on right now. 
uh, and not too much structure with my business, and I'm trying to figure out how can I do it all uh, right now. Well, what are you doing right now? Make the list of things that you do right now. And then, and then also tell me how many hours you're dedicating to each one per week. Okay. Uh, man, right now, uh, right now, uh, my, my business, uh, man, I'm probably still doing uh, at, at least 80, 80 to 100 hours uh, working my business. You know, I, I stopped considering myself an entrepreneur, man. I, I'm, I just told everybody I'm, I'm self-employed now because I, I do so much <laughs> inside the business, uh, working in the business mm -hmm. and on the business. Got it. So you do 80, 80 hours a week on the foreclosure side of the business and you're doing 300 k per year. Is that top line revenue? Is that net? Is Are you keeping the 300? How much of that are you keeping? Um, I, I'm keeping up that. I'm, I'm keeping... Uh, right at like 180. Okay, so out of the 300, you're netting 180. Yeah. So you said you're winging. Tell me what areas of your business you feel you're winging. Uh, man, uh, pretty much like the, the systems and processes, processing part. Uh, I kind of started, man, kind of uh, bootstrapped it, and uh, in the beginning, we, I kind of didn't um, take it serious as an as a actual business, and then I, I looked up one day and we were doing six figures, and I was, you know, so now I'm kind of trying to go back and put those quick systems and processes in place. What do you think you're worth? Uh, and, and, and don't don't get, don't give me the don't give me the commercial answer. Like this is where this you know, don't give me the I'm priceless like Mastercard commercial answer. You know I'm I'm, I'm talking like really. What do you think? You're, and be be honest. Your insecurities, fears, all that stuff. You know none of us are perfect. We all have insecurities. What do you truly think you're worth? You think you're getting paid more than what you're worth, or you're getting paid less than what you're worth? Uh, less. Oh, really? So you think you're worth more? Yeah. What yeah. What do you think you're worth? Man, uh, at least a million. Net or top line? Uh, net. So how come you're not? How come you're not making it? Um, I feel like it's it's been just a lack of structure. Lack of str you th you think that's the only thing? Um, pretty much. Yeah, that's what, that's that's what I'm thinking. That's what you're thinking. Okay. Uh, it, how how what are you doing right now to be improving Jonathan Grant? Like, what's your plan to be improving Jonathan Grant? Uh, right now, I'm I'm, I'm reading and uh, um, actually uh, I've joined a, a few courses online, just business courses, trying to uh, get more and more business knowledge. And uh, just trying to uh, change my crowd of, of people that I associate with. Got it. Um, okay. Um, what what books have you read? Have you read E Myth? No, I haven't read E Myth yet. E Myth has got to be at the top of your list because sounds like you have an organizational issue and you need systems. Uh, e Myth E Myth uh, 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 is the number one book you need to read next. Period. Um, that book needs to be at the top of your list to get your systems in place with your business. But you know, Jonathan, there's, a, there's the other part you gotta also be uh, thinking about. Uh, 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 there's the other part you gotta be thinking about as well. If you were really worth a million, you'd be making it right now. Uh, you'd be really making it right now. You would like to make a million dollar your income, but if you were worth it, you'd be making it right now. What you're worth today is exactly 180 net to you. And that's why you're making it. Yeah. Because if you really believe that you're not worth 180, there's no way in the world you wouldn't be making 180 right now. No way in the world. It's not possible. That would change. Because, <laughs> and how does one increase their value? Think about how do we increase our value? How do we increase our value in anything we do? How does one increase their value in anything they do? For instance, um, you look at the game of... Uh, are you a sports guy? You look like you're a sports guy. I mean, you post, posted yeah. your video with your kid. Are you, are you a sports guy? Yeah. Who do you, what do you like? What, what sports are you, who you follow the most? Uh, basketball, man. Who, who do you I like in basketball? basketball. Who, what's your team? Um, man, right now, you know, I, I go with the home team, but as, a, as a Houston Rockets, of course, but uh, as a sports player, man, uh, LeBron. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I almost threw up. Did you see that? Like it almost like like it, it, I almost threw up, man. 
Houston Rockets. Listen, hey, I res- stay, I stay mean, away from the Dallas, man. Stay away from Dallas, man. <laughs> All good, man. Listen, Houston Rockets, when you guys had Akeem Olajuwon, Vernon Maxwell, and, you know, uh, Cassell and all those guys, Kenny. That was an exciting team. You guys said James Harden to me. Uh, he can't. He, he's. He, you can't build a team around him to win a championship. I don't think you can. I may be wrong, but I don't think. I don't, so don't think you. I, I think he needs to be a two. I don't think he can be a one. Um, uh-huh. And then LeBron is. You know, LeBron. Are you a bandwagon type of fan, man? Are we learning a lot about you? Like, are you just like joining no, the? Man, uh, you, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not a bandwagon. Okay. All right. Man. Cool. I, like, I like to. I like to give credit where credit is due, man. No, all good. Now let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Honestly, do you think if Shaq would have improved his free throws to 72 percent, okay, and he would have uh, improved his um, his health? you know, and his diet, where he would have stayed more disciplined, and his work ethic was better. You think Kobe and him would have clashed as much as they did? Uh, probably not. They would have still clashed, but probably not at the levels that they did. Because you know what Kobe's biggest complaint was? Kobe was a workaholic, mm-hmm. and Shaq was a fun, loose, happy-go-lucky type of guy. And, you know, but Shaq would come into the season out of shape and Shaq's free throws would be 55% to 60%. And look, that's a lot of free throws you're missing. If you keep missing those free throws, that's a lot of them you're missing, right? So if Shaq would have improved it, he would have probably had five or six championships instead of four championships, maybe even more. I think the Shaq-Kobe you know, duo was the greatest duo in the history of Basketball. Even if people say Scotty Jordan, I put Shaq and Kobe ahead. I think ego got in the way with those guys, and right. Scotty and uh, you know Jordan didn't have that challenge because they were both willing to work hard. So you got to make a decision to up your game. You got to make a decision to recreate yourself. If you truly want to get to a million dollar your income, you need to understand that your potential can get to a million. You're no problem. But you today are not going to make a million dollar your income with the way you think today, you're not going to make it. You need to shift the thinking. Your business needs some systems. Your business needs some structures to be able to scale that business. And then there's sometimes the honest question you need to ask, which the question is, is this really the business I need to be a part of for the long term, 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, or do I need to adjust and look at some other industries? That's a whole different topic. But I'm more focused on you as an individual on how you can improve yourself. So guys, we got four minutes left. I'll do one more question and we'll wrap up. Does anybody have one uh, uh, question that you really, really want to ask before we wrap, wrap up this webinar here? Yes. Yes. Go ahead. I have. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, let me, do you have a question? Uh, I will give it to you. It's, it's fine. Okay. I, I will find okay, it. Thank you. I would find the answer myself. You guys are so sweet, man. Can somebody ask a question, man? My gosh, you want to be entrepreneurs and you're this sweet to each other, man? Send them a box of chocolate if you want to. Holy shit. I have, what, what kind of books you can recommend as, as a job of CEO, you know, to, to understand better? And That's a good question. I got two for you here. Let's start there. Let's start there. I got two, two books for you to think as a job of CEO. Take the top off. Just take those things off. Yeah. One is called Growing Pains. This is a very technical book. So don't expect to be excited. This is not a book that you're going to read and you're going to say, oh my gosh, that was a great motivational story. <laughs> this, this is not that book. This is a very boring book, but you need to read it as a CEO. Growing Pains. Okay. The other one is scaling up now this you're gonna like it's uh mastering the rockefeller habits you guys know who rockefeller is how a few companies make it and why the rest don't this is a very very powerful book scaling up i don't know if you guys can see it or not i mean you pretty much will see what it looks like okay all good those are the two books i would tell you as a ceo Great. And is, is it possible to get mentored by you directly? Yes, you said about conventions and stuff and webinars that you will do, but once per three months, for example, when you have time, yeah. not every day because you don't have the time. No, you know, I get offers, you know, Pat, I'll give you $100,000, I'll give you 50000 We get a lot of, lot of big offers and I'm just, I'm just saying no to it right now. I'm just saying no to it right now. Uh, maybe one day, maybe soon, 
but just not right now. I have a feeling because of the amount of emails we get, we get thousands of requests on a weekly basis to have do one-on-one sessions. Sometimes businesses want to pay us $100,000 to do consulting meetings with them and their board of directors, all this stuff. Um, maybe in the next 90 days we'll launch something because the amount of requests we're getting, but at this point I'm not taking too many people right now. So the answer at this point would be no, but hang tight, maybe we'll launch something in the next three to six months. Uh, hey, it's, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm really addicted to your, to your teaching, man. I mean, I sleep with them, I wake up with them, I fire them. So you and I are sleeping I'm together and I don't even know about it? <laughs> this 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 webinar got pretty intimate pretty quick here, man. This got this got awkward pretty quick. We've talked. We found out that Jason likes to smoke weed and play video games, right? Now 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 you're telling me you sleep with me. Um, there's a lot of strange things going on here. But look, on, on a side note, just to tell you anything, if you're gonna get addicted to anything, this is a good channel to get addicted to. Uh, and if it's producing content and it's helping you grow your business, that's what gives me joy. When I hear stories of you guys growing your business, I don't ask you for, hey, Pat, you know, guys, send me $20,000, I'll consult you. I'm not asking that. We, it's, people, <laughs> there are a lot of online people that hate valuetainment. That you cannot, you have no idea how many people hate valuetainment because I'm taking their business away because I'm giving it away for free. I get a lot of hate mail. We get a lot of hate emails of people saying you should stop doing these videos and just let us sell it for a thousand dollars to our viewers and I say no I'm not doing that not right now please not please right now please continue please continue yeah I will I will most likely continue doing videos like this for one more year I don't know if I'm gonna do it for forever but I, I guarantee you I will go one more year in 2017 all right thanks so guys with that being said hey listen let me tell you guys something before we wrap up you have no idea how much I appreciate you guys uh, uh, even though I give you a hard time, I'll push you around, whatever. I appreciate you guys tremendously for the fact that you have the courage to want to become an entrepreneur and make the world a better place and the fact that you take your life and business seriously. Uh, you're contributing to society and the world in a way that cannot be measured and I, and I applaud you for that. The fact that you have the courage to do that, you ought to be very proud of yourself. So from me to you, thank you so much for helping us get to 100,000. Next goal is a quarter million, then a million subs. Uh, have a wonderful day, everybody. Look forward to the next time we meet. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay.